Book six, first piece of folio. Guess what? If you've done a really good job of learning book four and book five, the folio is not that big a deal. Okay, so there are a lot of chords in here, but you actually played a ton of those in book four already in sites three. So if you're not feeling confident about your chording abilities, head back to book four, polish sites three, and even those little bits like Okay, they'll really help you out. Uh, probably the, the biggest thing about this is its majesty. I know I've had concertos before, but I, I don't think they quite compare to this, I don't know, feeling of grandeur or magnificence or um, embarking upon something really epic. Let's go with epic. Now, I know this is crazy, but I like to start with the first chunk and then turn the page and play the last chunk. Why? Because the last chunk is the hardest chunk and it needs the most work and it wants to be the most confident part of the piece so that when you get there, you relax and you unleash and you get huge booming resonant tone. So I don't like working through this piece as it falls on the page because then we get a weak uncertain ending and it has that feeling of, oh, you know, am I there yet rather than, Oh, are we there yet? Because I really like the end. I'm, I'm the best at the end. That's my best part. So let's start with the theme because that's kind of important, being the theme and all. And then let's revisit the theme in the last chunk of the piece. Uh, it's important that we have by now developed different colour and... Mm, I'll just go with colour. A spectrum of colour or a palette of colour for vibrato and tone so that we can hear the difference between a third finger and a second finger and a first finger all playing the same note because that's what happens in the theme and ideally we want to listen enough to cultivate sensitivity to the point where we can tell which finger is playing which tone. Let's start. One, two, three, because this is a fugue, it's not one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. There's our theme established. We want that shifting to be flawless. We've got to be really good at getting from second to third. I like to practice this idea. Start with your third finger, busy, busy, stop, stop. Same tone, second finger. Same tone, first finger. Same tone, second finger. Same tone, third finger. And then cut it down. Ready, go. And ideally, if you get someone to shut their eyes, they won't know which finger you're using. You know, because you can hear very subtle differences, but they won't, okay? So make sure your shifting is awesome. It's good to mark in the tones and semitones in that theme. Sometimes the C sharp in bar seven gets a bit snafooed. But because this piece is in D minor, that C sharp's really important. That's our leading note going, hi, hi, nearly a D, D minor, remember? Okay, Whew, got it. So, that's easy, turn the page. Okay, we're looking at bar 177. Dum, ba, 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 ta, ta, yun, ta. This sounds suspiciously familiar. Oh, it's the theme again, just with extra stuff. Who knew? Now, at this point in time, not a bad idea to play the first two polo studies. There are videos for them, just 
look for them, okay? Polo, studies, uh, double stops, chords, balance your bow on two strings. stops will sound out of tune no matter how good your intonation actually is. Mm, delightful. This is what I get for running my heater. My A still doesn't like me much, I feel. Okay, better. We're starting off with an octave. So, Shot bows. Ready again. Leave your second finger there and cross and set up the first finger with the F natural. Mm -hmm. That much again. Ready, play. Cross. Listen. space because you've got an F natural first finger. Mm -hmm. Play me. Ready, go. Ready, go. One more time. Okay, now try this bit out. to shift with two fingers on. That's awesome. Both of them. Start off with second finger. Everybody up a whole tone. Now a little secret. Both of those notes ring. So they're really easy to get in tune. It's also really easy to hear if you've got them wrong. Bummer, right? So we've got when I shift, I have the feeling of my fingers coming out of contact with the string. It's like that minute when you're just leaving the trampoline, okay? And your foot is still touching the trampoline, but there's no weight in it. And while you're still touching the trampoline, you shunt up a tone and then you kind of drop your weight back in again. So you don't lose contact with the string and go ta-da and move like this, like a bunny hop, but you release the pressure, glide up on top of the string, and then drop the weight back in. And try really hard not to squeeze. We don't want the thumb to engage. We just want the fingers to get pitch contact again. Okay, let's try the... Ready, go. Ready, go. Now let's try for da da da. Different rhythm. Ready, go. Ready, go. Yeah. And then we want to really lean on it so it's got this feeling of barely happening. Look at this amazing thing I pulled out that rings. Better? Let's try from 177, the start of this bit. Ready, and. Cross, chord, set the three. 
great. Now we sneak the first finger across to be friends with both strings. Perfect fifth across the strings. Put the second finger on, ringing A. Add the one back. One and one. Okay, so let's try this feeling of the one and one starting on the perfect fifth. Second finger comes in. Put the one back on. Add the three right beside for B flat. One and one again. I don't like playing first finger perfect fifths. My fingers always feel a bit and it's tricky to get exactly the right pitch across. So persevere with it. It might not sound great at first, but just keep trying it. And you'll work out what shape you need to make your first finger. It depends a little bit on the width of your fingers. And if you've got very fine fingertips, it can be gnarly. In the polo videos, I suggest placing your finger actually between the strings. So your target isn't the E string or the A string. It's actually something in the middle and you're smudging the weight onto both strings. That's usually the best fit for most people. But again, depends on the width of your fingertips and how much contact you can make. So have a go. And just have a look with your eyeballs and try and focus on your finger touching the space between the strings rather than one string and try and grab the other one. Okay. Okay, that phrase again. Ready and. Now come back to first position and my fingers are a semitone close. Yeah, C sharp and A. Jump the three across and pull the one right back to F natural. I love that trill. How good does it sound? I'll show you what's on this side. My first finger's right back at F natural. And I jump it across to the B flat on the A string. Semitone with second and third finger. Okay, let's try that little chunk from 183 and start at the line. Again. One more time. Let's go right back to 177 now and do a bit of a playthrough. Ready, and. Cross. Add the three. One and one. separately. Ready? Watch out for the B natural in the middle. It's a doozy. I don't know why. That's always the note that people trip up on when I hear this. They put a B flat in there and I freak out. So we seem to be fine on the G string. Again. Now try it from the tip of your bow. Make sure that your arm is feeling like oh, I can relax and I'm going to cross the string. Not, yeah. Okay, if you crush the tone out of it, you'll get a really ugly sound. So we want to this way. Ready, and. Again, my elbow is leading the way and helping my bow drop into subsequent strings. One more time. Ready, and. And then we're ready to start our theme again. With added fancy, here we go again. Set the F natural. Add the third finger. That feels oddly familiar. 
Oh yeah, we stole that. Great, cool. We're just recycling. Play 187 again. <laughs> Set the third finger and this time my elbow is oh, leading the way again. Because I'm always traveling from G to E on these slurs. Oh, what a surprise. One more time. Leave the bow on and add the A string to it. So check your bow is nicely balanced on the two strings. Yeah, okay, cool. Add the two. B flat. There's second finger playing that perfect fifth again, yeah? So I'm focusing my weight, the finger's weight, between the strings and the space between the strings, but I happen to play both strings with the finger. I find it a lot easier to do with second than with first finger. Okay, let's play from 187 again. Cool, ready, and. Dig the three. Put the, the octave on, third finger on E. Add the second finger to A string. B flat, perfect fifth. Move the second finger up to be besties with the third finger. Hmm, let's just take those four sounds apart. Again. Put the third finger on both strings. Oh no, don't really. Put it in the gap between the D and the A strings and then let it play both. Yeah, again. Leave the bow on, set the fourth finger on D and the second finger on A. Good, try that one again. Make sure you play it with an up bow. Elbow relaxes and comes into your body. Again. One more. Now set the three and one on again, going back to our first chord. Okay, let's play that set of four again. Da 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 Again. I'm playing them very drawn out, very half half, okay? I'm not playing them smoothly as they would actually happen when you play the piece of music. I am playing them in a practice mode. Ta da, ta da. Ta da, ta da. Okay, just to make sure the bow is really well in contact. Ready, and. We really want to sound like this. Hey, that's what we're working towards. Maybe not today though, right? Next little block. D, A, 3. Uh -huh. Then we've got a B flat harmonic. Then first finger's heading over to G and D and we're leaving the open A and E. Remember that secret? First finger's actually playing the space between G and D string. And then it leaps over to the E string. And stays there. So let's play the three. E one one ready go Oh sorry I added, added a whole chord in there it's just a double stop my bad go again double stop Yeah sorry I got carried away before again and Okay, head over to D and A string now. Set your first finger on a really nice B flat. So best advice I can give you about those last four lines is to play them in chunks. And I would start from, okay, the last, what, five notes? Then play the last 10 notes, go back to, Then a 
add another four notes on before that. So we play. So you just keep working back, adding on four or five notes or a couple of beats, but you get so confident with the last bit because that's the bit that gets the most practice. So you get more and more relaxed at playing it and those big chords really get their chance to shine instead of being, oh, 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 oh right? That's the, the grand plan. Now, let's take a look at the ghastly looking couple of bars before 177. They are these guys. Guess what? We've already played them. Ha <laughs> ha, how good is this? So our first idea is just this. Just that chord. Oh yeah, D, B, G. Make sure one and two are touching, semitone. Okay, now we kind of break it in half and play it explicitly spelt out. Cool, again. Yeah, fine. Next one, jump the first finger across to D string, low three and second finger on E string. Here they are spelt out. Check your C sharp. Okay, half and half. Okay, go back to the first one. One, two, one, two, ready. And. One, three, two. Good, do that again. Ready, and. One, three, two. Okay, next one we kind of spread out a little bit. Third finger comes up to a ringing D. First finger heads back to a F natural on the E string. Again. And the notes are. Okay, first chord. Ready and. One, three, two. D, three, one. set there right it's that phrase is in there twice so buy one get one free super deal go again from the start one three two spread out third finger focuses on the space between d and a strings yeah We go to the start. Ready and one, three, two. Spread out. Third finger on the space between D and A. Get fourth finger across to D string. Do you see my elbow comes through? Really helpful. Four, two, E. Okay, it helps you change strings cleanly. Don't be scared of putting stops in. Playing it how it's written on the page isn't necessarily the best way of learning it. Often there's a few intermediate steps. Ready? From the start of this chords again. And. One, three, two. Spread out. Bonus. Third finger moves across a little. Four, two, E. D, three, one. Now some of that may have felt a little familiar. Listen to the chord progression. Oh yeah, we've already played that. That's why it's so good to work on the last four lines first. You get a lot of other stuff in the piece for free then. It's in bar 191 when you played. Same thing. So now we're doing it in an easier fashion, more slowly, more spelt out. One more time. Ready and. Jump. 
then you're ready for okay now the bit that comes before that from 161 to 173 not as hard as it looks i like to teach it like this just the chords at first forget about all the fancy trilling stuff Shift up, put two close, uh, put four close, put two spaced away, semi uh, tone away from first finger. So that's the whole story. I'll turn around so you can see my fingers. First chord, second finger comes in, put the one and three back. They shift up just like they did before in our chords. Four beside the three, two spaced away. Back to one and three. Shift down again. C sharp. Dead easy, right? Okay. My Monty just needs to escape. Monty's my French bulldog. And he usually waits very, very patiently while I'm playing. But right now he doesn't know where he wants to be because he can hear piano upstairs and violin downstairs. And which room is warmer? He doesn't know. Okay, again, those chords. Ready? Second finger. One and three back. Second position. Four close, too far away. Shoot back. That's your framework. You'll want to practice that for several days before you try doing the, the next thing, okay? The next idea is just to release the lower finger. Shift to second position. When you do first fingers, focused between the strings because it's going to sound on the A string as well. Okay, nice and easy. The one stays there because it's going to sound on the A string now. Two and four take over. Back to the one and three deal. Down you go. Open A. So where your music is telling you to hold your first finger, hold your first finger on. It'll really help you. When you play this section, oh, the first finger is still remaining down, okay? Because there it is sounding on the A string underneath. And you might like to mark for yourself which of these low notes are A and which of them are C. You can hear it, but sometimes when you're kind of nutting this out and actually playing it for the first time, it's really helpful to uh, have that written in for yourself. Bye, Monty, have fun. So. Let's play that one more time. If you're not ready to add the trills, just play the chords. Tun, 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 tun. If you're ready, start lifting the lower finger. Off you go. Ready, set, off we play. Two, three, one. Ready to shift, here we go. Four and two. you've mastered that chunk the rest of the order you learn the piece in is completely unimportant because it's just a set of variations but because that's like the encore at the end of the piece it's super important to have something that blows everyone's socks off okay um, maybe we could just talk about the feeling of 
the Allegro Moderato. Ooh. So when we get to bar 33 and we're playing... Oh, I'm shrieking. Sorry. If you've been playing your Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, this is okay, right? Because we can practice this feeling in other really simple stuff. Even the feeling of... not that dissimilar. When we get to the piano, hmm, I feel like these fingers are super important. But again, if we've been practicing our review, or if we've been, you know, stuffing around with easy things courtesy of group lesson, difficult. The biggest challenge in there is maybe the clean shift to second position that just needs practice. That's worth practicing a hundred times. E, second finger on a ringing G, E, first finger on a ringing G. You don't have a good sense of where you're going because you're shifting off the open note. So that's a good thing to do with your eyes shut eight million times. Poco Minomoso, start of the second page. Well, this kind of looks familiar. I feel like it might be helpful to have the feeling of a soft wrist and a back of the hand that's ready to lift. And then I can just park my arm at E string and I can go get the notes off A string, right? trying to tell there because are you actually trying to show off all these amazing fast notes or are you trying to kind of give glimpses of the theme I think it might be the second one so this feeling of we're telling we're always looking for the theme storyline in all the variations oh just like twinkle variations and this is where I really like playing around with stuff like the twinkle accompaniment like because all the notes to twinkle theme are hiding in that Playing around with that and bringing the theme out of it is exactly what we do in La Folia. Okay, next little section at 65, you're going to need your sights one. Or your back of what? Because hi. So, strong core. Soft shoulders, soft spine. If your core is soft and soggy, you're gonna tense in your back and then you can't move your arm very well. So your core has to be strong and switched on and your weight has to be evenly placed in your feet. And then you can, you're able to swing your arms nicely and then this happens. And when this happens, because your back can move freely, suddenly you can take your ball off the string. about 
when we played. Yeah? So we've been working on this idea since book two. It's not too hard, it's old. If you don't find it coming easily, don't practice it here. That's a waste of time. Get book two out and revise Hunter's Chorus. Get book four out and revise Sites One. Practice it where you already know it. Don't try and learn it in the new piece. That's insane. Andante. This looks suspiciously like the first part. Those chords also look very familiar. Okay, there's one little bit in there we need to break down for practice. We're played. <laughs> Then we add our new layer, we already know this chord. We already know this shift. We already know this two and four because it's borrowed from page four. Ah, we don't know this idea. Back to first position. Hmm, let me just swing around and show you that. We've got the two and four. Back to the octave. One and two. Add the three close. It just takes practice. You're going to lift the wrong finger up about 800 times. No, you're not really. But decide which finger you're actually trying to take off. One and two. Add the low three. Spread out. That feels familiar. Who's coming off here? Oh, the one is. That's what's weird. Put it back. Okay, that's a little bit that needs a hundred times practice. Well, let's play again from about 86. Ready? And one and two and two. Add the two and the four. Back to first position. One and two. Add the three. Spread out. Take the one off. Put it back. Spiky boots on again. Tun, 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 tun. I don't think there's anything nasty in here except really clean string crossings. Gossip Gavot nailed it. Really nice staccato. Book one, Allegro, everything. Nailed it. Maybe the shifting in here is a little bit nasty. Let's just talk about that for a sec. First. I've got a second position. Two, two, three. Touch with the four. One, one, four, three. Three, two. Shift down. Uh, don't shift down there. Sorry, shift down there. My brain skipped ahead to the second part of the phrase. <laughs> okay, go again with me. First. Second position. Two, two, three, four, one, one, four, three, two, two, three, two, one, one, two. Semi turn down. First position again. idea of that all being in second position but it's really easy so write the second position in and then write in all the fingers so you're not tempted to shift out of it or go to third or go to first or do any other crappy thing just play it in second where it's super efficient and super easy okay now I look at the top of the next page page three and I have flashbacks to the last three lines but also to Veracini Jig because those semiquavers look a lot like Veracini Jig. So get your book five out.
really want to be good friends with your G here. And that means, again, relaxed spine, open shoulder socket, can just float, arm back and forth, no hassles, okay? So starting from the adagio. <laughs> with the idea of being on the G. Yeah? And. That's really delightful. Now the difference when you play it here is that you also have to cross the string. Change the angle of your bow while you're in mid air. Change. Change. E string. Change. Cross. Okay, I'm butchering the rhythm so that you can appreciate the bow stuff. Don't do this. That's wrong. That's right. Oh, we also learnt this back in book three, playing. That feeling of a slur and then power off the string. Okay, so that's all sorted out, that's fine. That's just a lot of shifting that needs marking in the music, especially stuff like. Hmm, that's a little bit weird. But as long as you put your position changes in, and you should be able to do that by now, that shouldn't need hand holding, that was pretty well consolidated in book five. I don't think that bit's hard. The next bit, hmm, good string crossings, a following right arm, nice shifting, and a feeling of syncopation. One, two, three, one. <laughs> it 800 times like that but spelling out each note using quaver beats is a really good way of making sure you don't chop anything short it's actually a great practice technique it's great to play like double bark entirely in semi quavers for example it just means that your counting has to be very very accurate and that you don't lose notes to slurs across the bar line which is what we have here so valid practice idea rest <laughs> Understanding that staccato is played from a stopped position. You don't play the note then stop it because it was marked staccato. You start the note that's marked staccato from a stopped position. 
So this feeling of each note has a stop before you let it sound. So the staccato dot is asking you to do something before you play the note that it's marked with. Does that make sense? Okay, it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge, but even think all the way back to book one. We don't play and stop at the end of the notes that are marked staccato. We play, we stop before. We don't play allegro like, I hope we don't. Maybe sometimes we hear it like that. But when we do, it's our job to fix it and to make sure that we play. The staccato is the stop before the note sounds. Okay, big idea, just, just work on that. Next little bit is just smooth sailing, right? I think all those slurs are telling us that we should try and introduce the E as gently as possible, like this. Not, no kicking it in the pants, right? The angle of the bow just changes. So you happen to be standing on both strings. It's a little bit like I'm standing on one leg and I just happen to get my foot closer and closer to the ground until, oh, I'm standing on two feet. That feeling. Yeah, have a try. Now cross. And that could nearly be our ending. We could finish the piece there but we know there's something else coming, right? We creep back in, we're a bit embarrassed, like, or we forgot to tap this bit on. And we're already really good at this because that's what we started our practice with. We've been practicing this bit for a couple weeks now and it feels easy and it's just time to show off. So, <sighs> enjoy. Um, I, I will endeavor to put up a La Folia, which is just a La Folia straight through, but this is kind of the bricks and mortar. And like I said, I feel like this is one of those milestone pieces that says, hmm, did you really learn sites one to the best of your ability? Hmm. Did you really polish all those double stops? You know, this. All that stuff in book four. Did you really, really have that nailed and understand what you were doing? And if the answer is no, go back and polish the things you already know how to play and then just drop those techniques into this piece. It will save you a lot of time. It's really hard to polish new technical ideas in a piece that you don't know yet. That's crazy. The whole point of the review that is such a valuable part of Suzuki is that everything is constantly in your vocabulary. And if you, you know, it's like discovering a spelling error. If you've got a spelling error in a really long, complicated word, you look at the parts of that word and you fix them. You don't just fix the new complicated word and not worry about all the things that, that went up into making it. You go back and play the easy stuff and you polish the technique in the easy stuff and then you just drop it into this. And I promise you that if you do that, your La Folia will sound fantastic in a week instead of crappy in six months. If you try and learn it from the ground up without polishing the technique where you learnt it, it's still gonna be difficult in six months and no one really wants that. So, review, that's where, we, that's where we polish stuff, that's where we do our best learning, okay, in the review. And then we just come and enjoy our new piece because we know 90% of it already. So, good luck and enjoy.